Thank you, Mr. Manavadu, for your thoughts on a dual career. So moving on to our third panelist for the day. Dr. Naren Pereira, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Architecture and Chairman Sports Advisory Board at University of Murtua. He completed his Bachelor of Science in Built Environment with First Class Honours, Master of Science in Architecture and finally his PhD in Architecture at the University of Murtua completing in 2015. As a sportsman, Dr. Pereira has won at many sporting disciplines right throughout his career in school, university, national and international platforms. He was awarded the Professor H.J. Billy Moria Award for the graduate obtaining the highest total marks at the BSCBE final examination. In his practice as an architect, he has won many international awards for his architectural designs. He was a part of the Sri Lanka national rugby team even as schoolboy and went on to represent the country from 1991 to 2001. He was the vice captain of Sri Lanka school's basketball team in 1990 and 1991. Not only that, he was the public school's record holder in short put event for under 17 in 1988. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to enhance your knowledge on the topic and bring in his perspective on team sports in universities and elite training, let me now cordially invite Dr. Narayan Pereira. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon to you all. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, the sportsmen and post sportsmen of the Sri Lankan universities. It gives me immense pleasure present a few thoughts on team sports in universities and elite level training at this important event. Actually, I, I think uh, I'm in a bit of a trouble. I think this uh, topic that Mr. Ratna Bodhali has given me has been discussed uh, uh, right throughout the day and uh, I might have to repeat some thoughts that my fellow panelists and uh, distinguished guests have uh, spoken earlier. Um, so first of all, why team sports and why team sports in universities? I think uh, uh, sports span not only uh, individual, but it also spills on to team sports. So what is different from a team sport of that of a individual sport? So that is something that we have to take into consideration. Most students are aware that physical exercise is a beneficial activity. We have been speaking about that all day. So, though we can engage in physical activity, we can do it either as a collective or on our own. But the main factor in a team sport is the collective. The collective endeavor to do uh, engage in a sport uh, collectively will give you other benefits. So the, if I say advantages, I can list it as such uh, as you see on the screen. So practicing sports that you need to be in a team player is one of the best opportunities to evolve as an individual. We know that. Besides teamwork skills, team sports help you improve your health, confidence, self-esteem, willpower and gain better life perspectives that will allow you to easily overcome future life challenges. To me, this is almost compulsive in the rat race our children run. Unfortunately, these days, it is uh, almost a linear process where uh, you are put into fixed lanes and you, need, you are supposed to keep on going in that. This is a vicious cycle. We need to break that. We need to give our children opportunities and this sports and team sports are very important in that so that they can diversify, they can connect, they can inculcate uh, relationships for better quality of life. 
in terms of uh, if I ask a question, do we need elite level teams in universities? Right. So we have a, a certain degree. I think uh, Mr. Ratnamudali also broke it down. Uh, the chairman of SLUSA also uh, broke it down, where the sports are engaged in, at different levels. In collegiate sports all over the world, the most rigorous of all undergraduate athletics are the most competitive and, the orga and organized. Right? So in all over the world. So the World University Games is a shining example. Where the level of competition and quality of athlete is tremendous. In this context, soon Sri Lankan universities develop their sports to compete on equal grounds with other universities in the world. We have seen this many times over. The answer is yes. We cannot say uh, the recreational is enough. We cannot say the inter-university, inter-club, inter-national uh, level is enough. We have to pitch ourselves to the next level. So this is a problem that we face uh, going forward. Uh, say, if we say, how do we create these elite level teams? Unlike individual, uh, the teams we know are more complex. It involves more uh, components, more participation, better management. Collegiate programs in other countries, say for example the United States, are funded by college or university. They are sanctioned by national bodies and Division 1 teams are the most skilled athletes. Tournaments are broadcast on uh, sports channels, so there are TV rights, etc. The best athletes often go into professional sports. Some students earn scholarships, grants for their performance too. But most importantly, these programs are run independently and they are essentially uh, funded, self-managed, self-funded, etc. Can we do that? Well, how do we do that? If you are to do it, we have to. Uh, it, it has been spoken at length. I think uh, Mr. Kalinga Mudali also uh, mentioned that. That almost, if it is, if you are going to take our athletes and our teams to the next level, the university mechanisms need to be re looked at. It's not that uh, I'm not saying that we have not been looking at it all these years. Yes, we have been doing that, but we have to take it on. As, as, as a uh, important agenda or top of our agenda, right? So to give equal opportunity for sports men and women to earn their degrees, so uh, in the in the field they want, and also to compete at at an elite level. Also, for that we need professional level input, and therefore, if you want uh, elite level teams, elite level performance, uh, success abroad, the professional level input is also important. So that diverse, uh, that uh, includes the, the coaching, the infrastructure, the management, all of that. With, with those in place, we can look at our athletes being counted among the countries and in, uh, uh, countries elite and on the international platform platform itself. The athletes themselves need to commit a vast amount of time and energy. We know that. Yet still be able to fulfill their academic commitment. Also I mentioned that. So in that sense, is it fair to be in the system of free education and strive to achieve this? Right? So thus, at least to a certain level, the elite level needs to be independent. Right? So they in terms of the way we take on things, also in terms of academics. So if they need to be professional, self-managed, as I mentioned, self-funded, either under the individual universities or the SLUSA banner. So uh, we saw that SLUSA is taking on these aspects or training teams that can compete at national level under uh, combined universities, etc. Uh, we have looked at, look at this some more. Can we have uh, now the catchphrase uh, 
in the recent times is uh, PPP, private public partnerships. You know, so we can we can go ahead uh, that with our functions that generate the best, but still uh, keep uh, feasibility uh, intact. Having said that, uh, what about the others in sports in universities? I started the presentation outlining the advantages of STEAM sports in general and for university students in particular. And uh, we saw that there are programs, uh, common programs are The elite level is not for everyone. While acknowledging the need for universities to take steps towards competing on even par in the world, we need, we need to cater for all is essential. Universities need to cater to the recreation. So in, the, in, in that context, mechanisms to achieve these will be tedious and will depend on the talent of the universities attract. Thus, we influx from year to year. So we, can, we cannot say this sport we will pitch uh, only or etc. So right, so the, at different times we need to focus on different sports and also there are new sports coming up. You know? So now we are looking at uh, sports like beach, beach volleyball, the Olympic sport. So there are some uh, arenas that we can compete with. It. These need to be well planned, well managed programs and they are imperative to be well planned. This is more food for thought than a clear way forward, right? <clears throat> Having said this, I, I, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, thoughts by uh, citing a few personal anecdotes. A significant highlight of my sporting career was to represent my country at rugby football. My first Sri Lanka cap as a schoolboy was against a champion uh, provincial team from Fiji and we know uh, talk about the baptism of fire. People who know their rugby will attest to the role of a rugby prop forward. As the jersey number one dictates, you are the enforcer in the team. You take the first hit on offense and also you make the first tackle on defense. This is a role integral to a team's success. It is a doctrine that I carry to this day. A doctrine that says, you are your team's best friend and your opposing team's worst enemy. To be someone who you can look in the eye and say, you gave it your all. I admit, it has its drawbacks. With integrity comes almost brutal honesty. With loyalty comes almost inflexibility. Thus, this approach may not be everybody's cup of tea in this day and age. Yet my message to you is to be steadfast in your commitment and your responsibilities as you can. Because as my faith says, when the great scorer comes, he will know how you play the game. Thank you.